We all know about the story of Adam and Eve. God made an apple and told them not to eat the fruit, so they ate it. I always thought the story was similar to the plot of the 2005 Need for Speed Most Wanted game. Power teasing is a plot device in which the main character is placed at the top of the mountain, but then trips and falls to the base. The character then climbs the mountain to get back to the top again. This is something none of you asked for, but I wanted to share anyway. The Bible was just a AAA racing game for the people of the Bronze and the Iron Age, minus the speed. If you look at how the story was laid out, you can almost guess that when the authors wrote Genesis, they wanted to set the greatest goal that the readers would want to strive for. The greatest possible thing that anybody can imagine, heaven. The story tells us God banished us from heaven so we'd want to get back there again. The Garden of Eden was like a 60-minute free trial for a broken antivirus that was meant to tempt us for more. But what if I told you that we'd never left the Garden of Eden in the first place? What if the story was not to be taken literally, but as a metaphor? The Garden of Eden represents happiness in life, and the fruit represents the rules that nature arbitrarily made up for you to follow in order to achieve that happiness. For thousands of years, people have been advocating many forms of renunciation because these things improve their overall well-being. You will abstain from this activity, from eating this and smoking that, and so on. Based on their own experiences, they learned that engaging in these activities can lead to more suffering. For example, if you eat too much candy, you'll feel sick. It's not that sweets are necessarily a bad thing. It's just that consuming too much sugar at once can mess up your internal organs and potentially kill you. At the same time, I want to remind you that these conditions are completely arbitrary. The liver is genetically designed to produce fatty acids and cause inflammation in the body if your sugar intake exceeds a particular amount. In the same way, the brain has these dopamine receptors that absorb dopamine and make you feel all tingly inside. If the brain produces too much of this chemical over a short time period, these dopamine receptors will get fluted and stop working properly. This is why you feel like garbagey when you browse your social media for too long because these receptors have stopped working as they should. But then again, there is no reason why these receptors have to be the way they are. Why can't we experience happiness as much as we want, as intensely as we want, and whenever we want to? Nature puts a cap on how much joy we can have at every moment of our lives, in the same way that the government applies a speed limit on the highway. It's not because it is wrong for you to go fast while driving, but that there's currently no way for you to go faster without running the risk of either dying, killing other drivers on the road, or in the worst case scenario, dying and then being transported to another world, where cars use humans as their primary method of getting around. A car would require at least 20 humans to carry their weight, and the tires break down every two days. I can only hope that you'll never have to face the day your car will turn around to look at you in the most wrong way you can imagine. But anyway, this video is about renunciation, not an edgy, poorly written fan fiction of the Cars franchise. And why does nature put all of these limitations on us? There's no reason. Everything is completely procedurally and randomly generated. Why do we have only two ears and not four? It's because we evolved from primates, and they also only have two ears. Or it's because only two ears would be enough for us to pick up sound from all directions, provide better sound quality as opposed to having only one ear, and help us better tolerate loud sounds a little more. The human body has evolved to meet the demands of survival, but why do we need to engage in and maintain our survival? Why are we hardwired to fear pain and death? If this aspect of life is arbitrary, then everything else must also be the same. If everything traces back to survival, and the need for survival is arbitrary, then everything must be arbitrary as well. In the story of Adam and Eve, God created an apple tree and told his children to not eat them. Who in their right minds would torture their kids for all eternity for eating a fruit. If God had made a baby chihuahua and told Adam and Eve not to eat it, then none of us would be here in the first place, unless they'd been Vietnamese, in which case I'm sorry. But God grew an apple tree, and God being God, he has already created both conditions in which Eve ate the apple and didn't eat the red fruit at the same time. Being omnipotent has its downsides, and one of them is that you must be able to create anything, and so absolutely everything must exist through you. But regardless of whether Eve did or did not eat the fruit, the fruit itself still has a function to cause suffering for those who consume it and for their children. However, this is not the apple's true function. This is only a theme, a pretext. The true function of the apple is to be meaningless just like everything else in existence. Eve shouldn't have eaten the apple because it would be bad for them. In the same way, we shouldn't engage in the things that would be bad for our survival. Not because we'd die, but because we'd suffer, all according to the rules. All the things we're trying to abstain from in life are just apples in different forms. No, that's not right. The entire universe is just one giant apple in disguise. Every cause has an effect. We never left the Garden of Eden. We're stuck in it. So what can we do about this? Nothing. The rules are laid out in front of each and every one of us. The more we hold back on the pleasures in life, the happier we'll be. That's what the sages tell us. That's why they can be in heaven even though their feet are on the ground, while we're stuck in the The Need for Speed Most Wanted Universe 2005 version. But one thing the masters don't tell you is that they know the rules are arbitrary. The way of renunciation is like learning to play an instrument. If you want to be able to play the violin, the instrument needs to be functional. Have all four 
four strings and you need to use your bow to make a sound. If you want to play the violin but you don't like the way it's designed, the only thing you can do is either make a better design or be patient and wait for someone to make the model that you want. In life, if you want to be happy but you hate all the routes of getting there that are available to you at the moment, the only thing you can do is sit it out and wait for a new route to be built. I can't tell you how long this might take, but there is simply no other way. If we're forced to play a game and we don't like the rules, the only thing we can do is hope that one day the rules will change again. There's a chance that the rules will never change. In that case, we'll keep waiting because there's nothing else for us to do. In the meantime, why not go find something else that you might enjoy? The violin is a medieval torture device. Go play something that isn't so heavy on the fingers like the saxophone or the organ.